Welcome to St Ear Church for those of you who are physically here and welcome by the wonder of the te modern technology to your front living rooms wherever you are or your studies or whatever you choose to do this in. in a, um, yeah. We're going to just do a few notices now. Uh, Nick, is there, yeah, is there anything you want to give us a notice? Uh, no, nothing, nothing particular from me. It's uh, all sort of um, carrying on the same at the moment. Morning, Nick. Morning, Janet. Thanks, Karen. So what we'll do is we'll just continue on. A few people might join us in a minute. Just to remind you what's on this week, there's the Wednesday a midday communion with Debbie and Father Samuel that's on the internet. At, um, I do a 10.30 service here every Friday morning, which is a very small, short, intimate type of service, which would be very welcome to, to entrances by the side door to keep it just to the faithful of our congregations. Um, and, uh, and of course, next Sunday, same time, same place, Zoom from here, which Nick will be celebrating and preaching. Um, so let's just still our minds and come before our Heavenly Father, wherever we are, and just put to one side the busyness of our week and all the things we might have to do today. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also. Now I'm going to play a hymn. Over a thousand tongues to sing. Yeah, if I can just remind people to mute yourselves, then we uh, will have the joy of listening rather um, to the official version. Uh, let me just try to uh, sort that out.
Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By the mercies of God, let us confess our sins and present our bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to him, which is our spiritual worship. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us, we are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all of this past and lead us out of the darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for the third Sunday of Epiphany. Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving presence, renew your people with your heavenly grace and in all our weakness, sustain us by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we have our readings, first Debbie and then Father Samuel. Thank you. A reading from Ephesians chapter 2. Verses 1 to 10. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now among, at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St John. Glory to you, O Lord. 
On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what concern is that to you and me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now standing there, there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water. And they filled them to the brim. And he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee and revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Okay. Thank you for those readings. So this is our third of our series of sermons on the epistle to the Ephesians. Yeah, yeah. And at the start, I did want to say a few things about the epistle. Well, when I worked in the police in London, a unit that I was in was based on the Albert Embankment, and my office had a view across the Thames to the Tate Britain. And sometimes when I just needed an hour or so to get away from it all, I used to take a short walk across Vauxhall Bridge to the Tate and walk around the galleries. There was one picture there that really yeah, it drew me to it. And sometimes I'd just walk over and have a look at it and just have a look at that picture. And that's The Last Judgment by John Martin. It's a spectacular picture, not only because of the subject, but also because of its size and its detail. In fact, I liked it so much, I went to the shop once and bought myself a postcard of it. But the problem about the postcard is, the small postcard doesn't do justice to such a big and beautiful painting. And the Epistle to the Ephesians is a bit like that. It's an epistle that has a great breadth to it and a great detail to it in just short six chapters. Nowhere does any epistle will capture Paul's theology so succinctly and uh, precisely as the, the epistle to the Ephesians. Yeah. yeah, that's one reason why some people think the epistle wasn't just written to the Ephesian church, but to many churches in the area, a bit of a guide to the Christian faith. At the start of chapter two, we have just heard, the writer tells us that we are saved through faith. I want briefly to look at the, what we mean by saved and faith. These are two words that we often skim over, but our understanding of which can have a significant difference to how we live our lives and our relationship with God. If you are a Christian, why are you a Christian? It's not just about taking out an insurance policy about everlasting life. It's about living in the here and now. If we are saved, we are saved in the here and now as well as in the future. For instance, I know someone who used to be an alcoholic. He wasn't able to give up his addiction on his own. But he found Christ. And in Christ and through Christ, he was able to break, break this addiction. Christ literally saved his life. Here we read that salvation is a gift. No one can demand it or earn it of their own. God owes us nothing, but offers us everything in love. We see we receive this gift through faith in Christ. 
Christian faith just isn't about believing in a God. Many religions believe in a God. But God in Christ was and is doing something different, something new, something transformative in the history of humanity and the world. Some people think that Christianity is just about believing in the fact that Jesus existed, that he wasn't just some fictional character like the Easter Bunny or the Tooth Fairy. No serious scholar doubts the truth of the existence of Jesus. Not only are there the Gospels, but there's other ancient writings, such as the Jewish historian Josephus, even if you leave aside what caused 11 simple men, Jesus' disciple, to have spread the gospel throughout the, lone world, the known world and in many cases died for their faith. Jesus undoubtedly existed as a historical figure. Some people think the Christian faith is about believing in a factual type of way that Jesus is the son of God. Well, that's certainly part of it. But the devil knows that Jesus is the son of God. That's why he tempted him in the wilderness. No one thinks the devil's a Christian. I used to know someone who believed in an intellectual sense that Jesus was the son of God, but he didn't want to be a Christian because he had a very nice life, a life of fast cars and beautiful women. Or was it beautiful women and, or beautiful cars and fast women? I'm not quite sure. But anyway, he didn't want to take it beyond that intellectual belief because it would disrupt his life too much becoming a Christian. So if the faith that Paul is talking about here isn't about believing in a God, it's not about believing in the historical Jesus, and if it's not all about believing that Jesus is the son of God, what is the faith that Paul is talking about here? Faith is more than an intellectual acceptance of something as true. Faith in the sense Paul writes here is about entrusting oneself, one's whole being, one's whole life, everything we have into the love and care of God through Jesus Christ. It's like getting on a plane where Christ is the pilot. We don't see him, but we sometimes hear his voice. When he speaks, we know it's for our benefit and for the benefit of others. We trust him on our journey. Even if we may not understand how a heavy plane keeps up in the air, we trust Christ in our journey. The idea of being a passenger on a plane might not seem too difficult for us to understand, but entrusting our whole life, our whole being, everything we earn and have into Christ's care can seem very frightening and we fight against it, preferring to trust ourselves rather than God, blaming him for things and taking back control as we try and fool ourselves that, we, that Christ is the problem and we are the answer. Faith is about giving ourselves completely into God's care and following his guidance. Now, as I come to an end, I'm going to finish in a prayer. And if you want to make this prayer your own, I invite you to say, Amen, after me. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, I know I have sinned in my thoughts, words and actions. I am truly sorry for my sins and want to turn away from them. You gave your life for me on the cross and now I gratefully give my life back to you. I ask you to come into my life. Come as my saviour to cleanse and renew me as my Lord to guide me, and I will serve you all the remaining years of my life. Amen.
We can have our intercessions, please. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promise through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. We pray for the church throughout the world and all the churches represented here today. Help us to be open to your Holy Spirit, working creatively in our lives and the lives of our churches. We ask for your blessing to be upon all of us who worship here. Give us humility to hear your word, courage to work for your justice, grace to share your peace with the earth, and the faith to live and proclaim the gospel. Strengthen all our bishops, our clergy, Nick and Kieran, all our retired clergy and our readers, 
and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory to the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the world and we ask you to help world leaders to work together during this pandemic to make wise decisions in order to defeat the virus and save lives. We give thanks for the work of international bodies and non-government organisations working to combat climate change and bring peace and relief amidst violence and turmoil. Give them the insight, strength and determination they need as they work on behalf of some of the world's most vulnerable communities in these very difficult times. We pray for the poor, the displaced, the victims of injustice and war, changing climate, those facing drought and malnutrition and floods, especially those affected by Storm Kiara in the UK and all who've been affected around the world by the pandemic. And today we thank you that 11 of the trapped miners in China have been rescued, but we pray for a swift rescue of the 10 who are still trapped underground. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for the towns where we live and we pray for our families and our friends and our neighbours. As we are still in lockdown, many people have felt overcome by feelings of despair and despondency. We pray for, for all who may find themselves isolated at home without the ability or the will to make social contacts. We pray for all those who do not have access to the internet and cannot join in to worship with us today. We pray for your help to create new opportunities and renewed hope for ourselves and those around us. We give thanks to all volunteers who continue to make a vital difference to the lives of those in our community. And we bring before you today all those involved in education as they try to cope with all the difficulties of homeschooling, providing schooling for the vulnerable and the children of key workers. We pray that their efforts will be rewarded and they will cope effectively with all the challenges and changes. Give grace to us, our families, our friends and our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those who are ill at this time. We remember them out loud or in the quietness of our hearts. We bring them to you in the confidence that you love them and know their every need. Bless all that is being done for their recovery. We pray for all who are in our hospitals, patients and health professionals, that they may be aware that you are with them in their need. We pray for families who are prevented from properly visiting sick or confused elderly relatives. And we pray for all people suffering pain or worry from non-COVID ailments at this winter time. Give strength to our doctors and nurses and health professionals and care workers and the priests and the chaplains, Lord. And we ask you to comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we remember those whom we love who are no longer here with us, whose anniversaries fall at this time, and for those who have died recently. We 
we give thanks for lives well lived, for happy memories. May they find rest in the eternal joy of heaven and let all who mourn their passing find comfort and peace in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us say together, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. So this is the opportunity where you can unmute for a short moment while we have the peace. So please feel free to unmute. Christ is our peace. He is reconciled into us into one body through his death on the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also, also with you. With you. The Lord be with you, and also, also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts, we, we lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. You give us your love, even when things go wrong. Jesus knew hurt and pain. Through him you wipe away our tears and fill us with your peace. You made us all each wonderfully different to join with the angels and sing your praises. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We thank you, loving Father, because when we turned away, you sent Jesus, your son, he gave his life for us on the cross and showed us the way to live. Send your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine. May be for us Christ's body and his blood. On the night before he died, when darkness had fallen, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After they had eaten, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, 
and shared it with his disciples saying, this is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. So Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate his love, his death, his risen life, as you feed us with these gifts, send your Holy Spirit and change us more and more to be like Jesus, our Saviour. Help us, Father, to love one another as we look forward to that day when suffering is ended and all creation is gathered in your loving arms. And now, with St. John, St. Ea, and all your saints, we give you glory through Jesus Christ in the strength of the Spirit today and forever. Amen. And now let us pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus is a Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
let us pray. Almighty Father, whose Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, may your people, illuminated by your word and sacrament, shine with the radiance of his glory, that he may be known, worshipped and obeyed to the ends of the earth, for he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And may God, who in Christ gives us a spring of water, welling up to eternal life, protect in you the image of his glory, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and those you love this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Whatever your week brings, I hope you know the presence and the presence of God with you and his hand upon your life. And from all here at St. Ear, we wish you. Goodbye. Have a good week, everyone.